All right, guys, so I want to talk today about the force pedal. So they basically come in two different colors. They're coming out with a red one, I think, this summer, which is a little bit harder and smaller. Great thing to use in the gym. But why they're so great is due to a pressurization strategy in my canister, there tends to be basically offsets that affect my entire body. So if you look at your hips, most people can get hip extension, probably one hip can't get in the other. So realistically, like most righties as humans tend to live in their heel on their right foot. So it's like their toe is up and then they lift their toe on their left foot. So this is kind of a human thing, which makes it really hard when you're playing a rotational sport. So even when you set up to hit driver, putt, your body thinks this is what's going on even though it feels like you're on both feet. So as a result, what we tend to see in golf is a lot of times because I'm too much in my heel and don't get enough toe, when I go to take the club back, what ends up happening is pressure walls to the outside of my foot too soon. That doesn't allow me to internally rotate the right hip very well. So my weight tends to come this way because I don't have good footing on my right side, I can't really load because I can't get internal rotation in the hip. So that prevents me from really getting like a little bit of a squat in my takeaway. Same thing on the finish. When I'm coming into my left side, if most of my weight is in my toes, when I come through the ball at impacts, the weight should push from my toe back to the heel to get into my finish. If I can't really get into my heel, I end up trying to push back. Because I don't really get good heel here, my strategy is typically lumbar extend. So for all these things, it's not a, you did it right, you did it wrong. It's like a spectrum. But basically, if I don't ever train it, I won't own it. So. You can tell someone all day long that this is what they're doing. It's not a think about it thing. It's a pressure thing. And unless you work on the pressure, it's something you're not going to change this unless it's just purely an awareness thing. But most people are limited by the pressure. So that's why I love the force pedal. So two drills I like to work on. One, first one being kind of loading. So like I said, most people are too much in their heel. So this is a great way from a drill perspective, kind of taking the club up to the top of the backswing. And you want to start to work inhale breath, exhale, trying to scoop that right butt cheek. What we're starting to do is load the pressure and change my end range strategy which is going to be at the top of the backswing. So what I like to do is do two or three rounds of 15 to 20 second isometrics. So the way a swing works is I take the club back. My right foot should be dragging back. My left foot should be pushing forward. That's how I get ground reaction force. Typically I roll out because I don't get enough toe. So this provides me with more toe in my loading strategy. And then when I get to the end range, I want to inhale breath, exhale. My left foot's pushing forward. I'm really trying to get into this glute, trying to feel that wrap in my shoulder. So kind of holding that isometric and working on the pressure at the end range. But if I'm really scooping good here, I should really be able to feel more toe and heel kind of pushing the floor that way which is gonna get me in a more loaded position. As far as a finish drill, we can kind of go the other side. So on something like this, I like to basically take the club across the shoulders. And then what I want to do is I'm gonna take the club back. So I'm loading. And then I want to start to come in and really work on heel scoop. Basically trying to keep my arch knee on this wall and really try to find that heel. 
trying to start to keep everything engaged. What ends up happening when I lumbar extend is I can't get my hip underneath me, so my ribs flare, I arch the back, I lose my wrap in my shoulder because I don't have any pressure, so I just blew out my ribs. So I'm working on keeping the ribs down, shoulder connected, and just getting those feels as far as loading. And then what you can do is kind of these drills and then go right into hitting some balls, but kind of cycle maybe, you do three rounds isometrics, then you kind of do maybe set a 10 kind of on the finish drill, hit 10 balls, maybe do that once, twice, and then kind of continue to hit balls. But all we're doing is working on changing the end range pressure strategies to allow you to do what you want to do on the golf course. All right guys, so first drill we're gonna do today, if you guys are in the gym, you can use a small two and a half pound plate, a two by four golf course, force pedal. Works awesome. So part of the reason why people can't load into their glute, one, their pelvis is dumped. Second reason is even when you start to clean up pelvis awareness, it's a pressure situation. Physically at the ankle, hip, and shoulders, everywhere in the body, like the joint is driven forward, which means it can't get all the way to the back. So if I've got an anterior tilt to pelvis, fix it. If I wanna get into my glute, I never get pressure in my back. So what the force pedal is gonna do is help offset the imbalance that you have and start to train it. So for a righty, tendency is I can't get in my glute, my right side. What we're gonna do is chalk the pad of your left toe. One of the best ways to do this is going barefoot because most people's toes are basically too close, so think roots of a tree. You can really start to feel the floor if my toes are in really close, I can't spread. I tend to kind of roll out. Part of the reason I also can't is because I don't have good internal rotation at the hip and the ankle, so it makes it really hard for me to keep my arch. The arch is key for neutral pelvis and creating more ground reaction force. So on this drill, what we're gonna do is, I wanna think about chalking my toe left side, so like I said, most people have a tendency to just kind of use their right foot to load in a golf swing. So think about like my left toes being like a gas pedal. So what I want to start to do is I start to take the kettlebell, and you guys can use like a four kilo bell. So I want to start to think about, I'm going to push through the force pedal. So I'm starting to kind of load into my toe. And I want to wrap that left shoulder so I should be able to feel my lat. And I'm going to stay here and breathe. So I want to think inhale breath. On the exhale, my left foot is pushing forward. I'm trying to scoop and drag my right foot back. Inhale breath. Exhale, drag. I'm going to reset. So remember, this way this way. So like I said, most of the loading is going to happen as far as getting into the heel and really using that left foot between like P2 and 3. So from parallel up to the top of the backswing. So it's really starting to find that pad of your toe. So this is tethered to the floor as I start to take back, really pushing through that front of that left foot forward. And I'm just gonna hang out at the end range. My goal on here is really to start to get the opposing forces while kind of not being dynamic. This is gonna teach pressurization as far as like all these moving pieces starting to work good with the breath. Until you can do this statically, there's no way you're gonna do it with a club 100 miles an hour. So I think the biggest thing is to put yourself in an isometric and start to get familiar with what all the players on the field are doing so your brain can coordinate it in an isometric. And then you guys can start to get more dynamic with the drills. You know, it could be something where it's a... I mean, there's millions of ways of doing it. 
But I think the biggest thing is for you starting to learn to use your left foot as well as your right heel in your swing to start to be able to find your glute at the top of your backswing and get familiar with what good pressurization feels like. You wanna set up a band with low tension. You wanna kinda of find the sweet spot so you kinda of have good tension at the end range so you can feel what you did on the first drill. So I'm gonna set up, once again, if I'm a righty, I'm gonna go pad underneath my toes on my left side. And then I'm gonna kinda of grip the club. And I wanna same thing, as I, I wanna keep my left toes tethered. I wanna make sure that I've got this force going again. And I wanna just nice and slow, I wanna think inhale breath. So I'm gonna inhale breath. One of the biggest things in a golf swing is if I don't really have my left foot connected to the ground and pressurized, I tend to live in my trap with my left shoulder. So I want to stay wrapped. So when my arm comes across my body, I should be able to feel like my shoulder is working down off my hip. If I'm in an extended position, so here's a, my butt is scooped and I'm loaded. If I'm in an extended position at the hip, then my ribs flare, I tend to be in my trap. I should feel like I have towel under my armpit as I reach across the body. So there's a relationship between getting air in your upper back right shoulder and you being able to bring your left arm across. And for most people, because they live in this extended posture, they can't get air in their upper right shoulder. That's the same reason why most golfers shift out because they can't get good air in the back of their shoulder or their hip. I need that to get internal rotation, which is necessary to keep the pelvis neutral, which is necessary for me to create ground reaction force. So all that really matters as far as moving the way you want to. A golf coach can tell you all day long, I want you to do this, I want you to do this. If your pressure strategy does not change, you physically won't be able to do it. The pressure limits what the joints can do. And if the joints say no, because it can't do what it's supposed to do, then you're not going to move the body the way you want to. The pressure dictates what the body can do. And if you don't have good pressurization strategy, you're just going to compensate. All your great athletes do it. It's just not effective from an injury or a maxing out performance standpoint. So on this drill, same thing. I want to really find the inside edge of my arch when I start to take the club away. But I should feel like I'm pushing the club away from me with my left hand. Right arm's just kind of hanging out. And then imagine someone's kind of like hooked your hand. My backswing, if I am basically at the top with my shoulder wrapped, I'm basically doing a row. So my left hamstring, my left lat, kind of shoulder connected, is going to pull me through. So everything in your top of your backswing should be tethered to this left side. If I have good connection with the floor, left foot, my hip's in a good place, I need my hip in a good place to get my shoulder in a wrap position. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in my trap, and then I can't pull it's kind of like the joints pulling rather than my muscle. But everything is loaded this way. And then it's like a friggin' slingshot that just pulls me into my finish. So on a drill like this, it's not a matter of how hard can you do it. It's more of a keep the tension super light, but just start to get the feeling. So for most people, it's gonna be a dumped pelvis. Find what neutral kind of feels like in your setup. And then you want to take an inhale breath and kind of load. So think inhale breath, fill in the upper back. And then your exhale is gonna pull you through. So inhale is filling the body with pressure. And then on the exhale is when the ribs pelvis are gonna get that compression. And that's how we're gonna come into rotation. So great drill to work on that. You guys can do isometrics where you're kind of holding at the top, 
you guys can just kind of rep it out. There's no right, wrong way to do it. It's more of getting the pressure strategy and the mechanics to work with the breath and getting everything synced together that's gonna help your game. All right, guys, so hopefully those first two videos were helpful. This last drill kind of starts to bring the first two drills together a little more dynamic. We use a med ball. But one thing I wanna talk about real quick is just the action at the feet in the golf swing. Because I've posted a lot of stuff in the last few weeks, I wanna be clear about what's happening in the golf swing. So when I set up driver, iron, I should be neutral, meaning my weight is kind of sitting kind of even in my arches. So there's like three positions of the foot if we think about it. Like it all comes back to like gait cycle where I'm running. So there's basically like heel, neutral, heel off, I'm on the toe. So the way the feet work is pressure moves from basically front to back in the feet. So in my golf swing, if my archers are kind of neutral, when I start to take the club back, my weight in my right foot shifts back. So it's like my foot is pushing down through the floor, pressure is coming to the heel. That's not saying that I don't have some pressure on the toes, but I'm gonna have more weight in the heel than the toe as I take the club back. Same thing, so when I'm taking the club back, my weight shifts this way. In my front, in my left foot, my weight is gonna shift from neutral arch to the toe. So I basically get this force. When I come out of the top of my back swing, the weight is going to flip flop. So I'm gonna take the weight, which is primarily in my toes, and it's gonna push weight back to my heels. So as I come through the ball, the weight comes neutral, and then I drive heel. I need heel to get my pelvis neutral. That's gonna allow me to find my adductor. That's gonna allow me to extend my hip. If I never really get back into my heel, because most righties like predominantly live in a posture that's literally, they live in their heel on their right foot, toe on their left foot. Like they don't realize it, but like this is what the body thinks going on down here as far as what it's working with which makes it really hard to get pressure back into my heel. So if I don't get enough pressure, I can't find my heel, I can't get adductor, I can't get neutral pelvis. So I get this fake, I can't really find it. I have to lumbar extend to come out of it. If I can never get heel on this side, like think of this like a syringe on my left side, like a big long canister. Most righties can't ever get heel on their left side. So they live extended. So think of like a syringe and then the little plunger at the top of the syringe. If I'm never getting my pelvis neutral and my ribs flare, it's kind of like the syringe piece is out of the syringe. Like, if I can't get my pelvis neutral and keep my ribs tethered, I don't actually have anything to push down on. Which means, even when I take the club back top of the backswing, I tend to be in my trap. Because if I can't get my pelvis neutral rib tethered, I can't have my lat connected. Because if my ribs are flared, there's nothing to tether the shoulder to the pelvis. So it's just kind of floating in space. And oftentimes, I'm pulling from my trap and the joint because I can't actually take this rubber band and load it because I can't get heel on here. So this is where the force pedal is awesome because a righty has a really hard time finding left heel their strategy is extension. 
I can't find my left heel. I'm going to lumbar extend. I'm going to lose my ribs and I'm going to trap out of it and put all this torque on my back. So this is a great drill as far as starting to take club up. I would say like anywhere from like three to six pounds. This isn't about heavy. It's about feeling tethered at the top and starting to find connection. So as I load back here, I should have a lot of weight on my toe, a lot of weight on the heel. When I come into my downswing, my weight is going to shift from my toes to the heel. So what the force pedal does, since I tend to live in my toes on my left side, this is chalking my foot so I can actually find heel, which makes this great. So I'm coming up. Now when I start to come into my backswing, my toes can push the weight back into my heel, which allows all the force to come up the hip. If I can't ever find heel, I basically have to lose my arch, dump the pelvis, and what tends to happen is my knee comes out because without my heel, I can't get neutral pelvis, and I have to have some kind of extension strategy. So this is a good one for take the club back, but I'm starting to try to find the heel as I come into my finish. What this does is just kind of start to put everything together. But if you have a true connection, at the top of that backswing, I should literally be able to feel those toes I should be able to feel my lat in my left side. Oftentimes, most people are in their trap. That tells me that the ribs are flared because I can't keep this somewhat tethered at the top. So oftentimes, like if you can't feel your lat or kind of like right here, back of the shoulder, top of the backswing, it tells me you live in extension. Now here's the thing. I've seen some of the best players in the world come through our doors for the last seven, eight years. Most people use some type of extension as a strategy. So this isn't a good, bad, it's just a spectrum. This is something we're working on it in the gym is going to transfer to the course. It's like a pattern. Working on it every day is going to clean it up. Your default program is extension. It's just a matter of how bad is it? Are you in pain? Are you trying to clean it up or do you want to just keep it moving forward? But from a pressure strategy, the most efficient way to get the most out of the pump action of the ribs and pelvis is going to be the training. So this is something to just be worked on, but I wanted to put this series together. Like I'm not a golf coach. I suck at golf but I understand the mechanics that drive the swing. And as I get better, like I wanna share this. Like I see tons of 20 year old golfers trying to make it and they think it's all about strength. And I saw a really good post this weekend after Bryson won. And it just talks about like, there's a whole lot going on in Bryson's swing that allows him to generate a lot of power. Yeah, he lifts heavy, but he also has a lot of joint options available to him because his pressure strategies are amazing. Like if one joint in the body can't do what it optimally wants to do, you lose a little bit. And then you start talking two, three, four, five joints in the body that can't do. Like there's a lot of club head speed lost there. So it's not necessarily always about strength, a big part is the fundamentals that drive the pressure strategy if you want to improve your swing. Because you can speed stick yourself seven days a week, trap bar deadlift 400 pounds. That doesn't change what's going on from a mechanical standpoint. And this is where training these types of things, it's not going to be heavy weight. It's going to be awareness of body, stacking joints, 
becoming aware of where the end range gets hard for you and then paying attention to that and learning how to breathe into it. And inch by inch, you clean up patterns which drive performance. So hopefully this helps. You guys have questions, feel free to reach out. Like I said, like I'm at a point 22 years into my career, like I just wanna share this stuff. Like it really matters. And it's kind of one of those things where if there's things you heard you don't understand, or there's things that I don't understand, like tell me, like I'm putting out the best that I know. But my intention here is to help people because I see people chasing performance all the time. And most of the time that means like I need to strength train. But even these pressure strategies that are used are the same strategies people use to deadlift and bench press. Like if the pelvis and ribs are not tethered when you're bench pressing or you're deadlifting 100 pounds, like you're just coming out of a deadlift with lumbar extension. You're chest pressing up in your trap because your ribs and pelvis aren't tethered. Like it matters everywhere. At some point, cleaning up the patterns helps you. And the biggest thing I see is like, I got tons of 70 year old people coming in our gym. Like, I'm sorry, but most 70 year olds are in pain. They've got joint replacements. Like this stuff matters long-term too. Like just overall health. So hopefully that helps, but Shoot me any questions.